The sanctuary gardens are the smaller show gardens at Chelsea. I think they often provide more inspiration than the large gardens because the designs tend to be more achievable and practical for the average sized garden. This garden is all about the story but which we all know and love, The Secret Garden by Francis Hodgson Burnett. It's designed by Thomas Hoblin and I think it's got some clever details in it. The fence behind me is staggeringly stunning in my book. It's made out of oak and it was removed when they're putting the HS2 line, which they're currently working on flat out, and all the timber comes from one big oak. And so it was a pretty old oak and guess what they found inside? A musket shot and they knew it was, they could identify it actually was from a musket. The louver effect has obviously been designed to give that secret garden. In the book, they've got that amazing stone or is a brick wall which she managed to get the key in. But here you see into it through the louvers. And Tom's made the gaps 50 mil. And so it's, I imagine he tried and tested this at home because you have to see enough and yet it has to appear secret. So getting the balance is quite difficult. And the actual planks themselves are 150 times 50 mil thick. Beautiful, beautiful old oak. So it looks really stunning and is the key feature of the garden. Um, other things that I love are the roost typhina on the corner. And obviously it's only the female roost that has those wonderful candles that look so staggering at this time of year. The external planting is soft and enchanting, while the inner sanctum features a more jungly green approach. It's just a very clever, lovely little garden. It works really well. My only reservation is whether the public can see enough of it. I remember in the past people have done big wall gardens and you couldn't see enough of it and they were criticised. But I think, I think Tom's got the balance right here because you can, it's enticing and it will make you slow down and peer in. And then when you get to the other end, then you can have a really good view. One of the big challenges with this garden and one or two others at Chelsea is it was only commissioned eight months ago. And you think, eight months? That's a long lead in. But actually, it's not to design it, get the design approved, get all the plants. Um, that, that's a big ask to do it in such a time. And I think the effect is really good. This is going to be a favourite, I'm sure. This is the Parsley Box Garden designed by Alan Williams. And I think it is achievable. It's a small scale garden and it's designed for the over 60s. Now, I disagree with that. I think if you were 20, you'd like this. Or if you were 90, you would love it. It's designed for everybody, surely, because it's all about food, eating and enjoying the outside space. And I think he's done it very successfully. Whereas we've all seen Pottinger Gardens that we've all known and loved forever, this is a more modern take on it. Now, when I saw it earlier in the build-up, these planters were all wrapped. So he's got these brass-coated planters, and he's also got the planters which are done out of birchwood ply. And they've actually got a blowtorch, and they've actually charred them. And so that's why you've got this patina on them. And then they put a lacquer on it. It's really successful. I love his really old fig trees. And I love um, the heptacodin, the in tree for Chelsea this year. Tiny little kitchen, but it's all in there. Everything you would ever want to have in an outdoor kitchen. Um, the canopy is a nice modern touch. So he's got a very traditional element, but then he's done it in a very modern way. There's just this sort of notion of a canopy over the top, I think really helps contain the space and really brings it into its own. And look at the paving. He's carried the same theme through in the paving with the brass. Vibrant colors, vibrant mix of vegetables and plants. These laurel balls, this is the Portuguese laurel, probably something like port, um, Angustifolia, Angustifolia, which has a slightly narrower leaf than the ordinary Portuguese laurel and doesn't get the shot hole problems. Bits of sculpture potted in. Um, great. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody of any age will adore this.
This is the garden I'm going to pack up and take home with me. Um, it's fantastic. It's designed by Taino Sionio, who is Finnish, and it's actually sponsored by the Finnish Department of Agriculture and um, Forestry. And I think it says a lot that a government department is putting money and backing behind gardens like this because it has actually got many serious, very good points to it. It's called the Finnish Soul Garden and saunas obviously well known throughout Finland and they're meant to be extremely good for your mental health. I've got one or two footballer clients who are putting in saunas or have put in saunas because it's so good for your mental stimulation and for your body. And so they're not just a pleasant thing to do, they're actually very beneficial to you. Um, and beside it we've got this wonderful pool so you can come out of the sauna and then you can plunge into the pool and that is also very good for you. More serious points are obviously the roof. The planting on the roof is really carefully thought out because Taino actually does research at the university into the greening of roofs. Now obviously there's millions of acres of roofs throughout the world and instead of having tiles which just bounce off heat they're very good for absorbing water, they're very good for biodiversity, they're very good for insulation. So really we should be having far more green roofs throughout the country and throughout the world. And what Taino does is because not only is she a researcher into green roofs, but she actually works as a garden designer. So what she does is when she's got a client coming up and she's going to put a green roof on, she has a word with the university and they do trials on it, they monitor it. So it's not just thrown up by any means at all. It's actually really well thought through. It's very scientific and it's very positive. And I'm sure in 10 or 15 years time, we'll be seeing many more green roofs and a very good thing too. A lot of reclamation here. We've got reclaimed sleepers, which I think look fabulous, contrasting with the highly modern sauna. And by the way, if you want to buy this sauna, it's available for 10K. And wouldn't it look fabulous in many gardens? The rocks come over from Finland, as have some of the trees. And Prince Charles is interested in buying some of the trees, probably, because he's got a very good tree collection in his arboretum, and he might well take some of these. Now, the pool is very natural looking in a way, very soft, very sympathetic. But then we've got the very, very Finnish feeling outdoor eating area. Now, doesn't it just shriek Finland at you? Clean, modern, simple, quite low key, but strong design. And if you look at the raised bed, I think the raised bed's fun. I've never seen a raised bed like that, but it, it's perfect, isn't it? A proper little area for beautiful herbs and things like that. I love the back cloth, the boundary, the beautiful cladding around the edge. It all has the same feel with the single stem bachelor. I think they're bachelor utilis, the birch trees, young feathered trees. What I love about this garden is it's in two different halves, but actually it gels very well together. Very stylish, very simple, very strong. I think it's triumph. I think it's a really lovely garden. And I think it's really great that the Finnish government are prepared to sponsor gardens like this. And the reason is, obviously, is because Chelsea is the most prestigious flower show in the whole world. It um, promotes massive business for horticulture throughout the world. And people that come and exhibit here get massive international coverage. And that's what it's all about. So it's a massive gain for the horticultural industry. Um, and I think that is such a big plus and all us gardeners really benefit from shows like this. This is the garden for the Bible Society all around Psalm 23 and it's designed by Sarah Eberly. Sarah has done so many show gardens. I think she's probably more, done more show gardens at Chelsea, Hampton Court, all the, all the shows than anybody else. And this is a little bit of Dartmoor. And what is different about this garden to Sarah's normal gardens is normally she does very precise gardens all set out on CAD. But this she's using local rocks. They're all different shapes and sizes. So it really was fitting it together on her feet far more than she normally does. And the other difference with this one is because it's for the Bible Society, they had the whole site blessed by a priest and also the people who are working on it. Um, it really is charming little restful space. 
beautiful running water, beautiful bits of rock, aren't they? Beautifully done. And Sarah's attention to detail is always pretty stunning. And you can see the way she studied the planting within the rocks and the use of the beautiful old pines and the water, lovely pool. You almost want to swim in that, don't you? Um, I think it's going to cause a lot of interest. I think a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. It's not the sort of garden you could actually sit in. I just, my one slight, slight query is I would love to have just a space where you could get a tiny little chair and table so you could actually use this garden more. But hey, it's a wonderful garden. Oxford University and University Hospital of Oxford approached Naomi Ferret Cohen, who is the designer of this garden, to create a garden to celebrate the NHS after everything we've been through. And this garden stands out amongst all the gardens because of the colour. A criticism this year is that the show gardens, which we're expecting to be masses of bold splashes of colour, riots of palettes of all over the place, is actually been that they're actually quite green and more subtle and subdued. Naomi has gone the opposite direction. This is a true celebration. And she's used many dahlias, nephophias, lots of grasses, which are obviously at their best. And the whole thing has come together really well. So we've got the persicaries here, we've got lovely heleniums, we've got red hot pokers, beautiful dahlias, echinacea, so we've got oranges, pinks, purples. She's throwing the whole palette together, but it doesn't look a mishmash, it just looks very, very vibrant and enticing. If you look carefully, there's lots of quite clever things here. The paving's all done in quite a modern fashion with a very narrow two, three millimetre joint. We've got big slabs and then we've got bands of longer sets breaking it up. This lovely steamed oak structure over the roof makes you feel very enclosed. It makes it feel like a sanctuary, which is what you want. And um, they've got light, up lighting in the seats, up lighting the beams. And the lighting this year has been played out in the gardens more than any other year because obviously the gardens will be open when it's almost dusk in the evenings and the lighting has made so much difference to the showground. It is amazing what it's achieved. I like the way they've used copper. So they've got a copper finish on the water features. I think there's some sort of metal, maybe zinc, and then they've painted on a copper finish and they brought together the copping banding in the oak structures you can actually see panels of copper that they've set in and they've actually beaten them out so they look like they've pushed pebbles into them without the pebbles so they've got this sort of dimple surface over the panels and i love the fencing backdrop this is actually clad in porcelain so you get porcelain tiles that are just six millimeters thick and normally you put them on a block wall, but here they probably put them on ply or something like that because obviously it's a temporary structure. But I think it gives a very subdued but not dull background and the vibrant colours really pop against it. So I think that's most effective. Um, I like the big trees in the corner and the, also the two really unusual pairs in this garden. They're pyrus cordata. And apparently there are only four pyrus of this species in the country, so they're very, very rare. But they came across them and they've used them. Water is everywhere and I think there's nothing more soothing and more settling than water. I can just hear it gently going in the background. The rill runs all the way around the garden and then we're sunken down. So it actually removes you from the comings and goings all around you. It really does make it feel a very settled, enclosed and tranquil space. So I think this garden will get a lot of attention because she's really embraced the colours of the season. It's really worked brilliantly and um, it's a piece of art, a work of art, and I think she's done a fantastic job. In our next Chelsea film, we are going even smaller with the balcony gardens. All the designers are new to Chelsea and have some fantastic ideas for designing a tiny area of just five metres by two metres.